As Britain went into lockdown, animal lovers scrambled to get a new four-legged friend to hunker down with a whopping 393% increase in inquiries to the rescue charity Dogs Trust from April to May. Now, some of those to get fur babies during lockdown include Love Island's uh, Jordan Hames, who posted a photo of his new dog, Callie. Uh, latest Bond girl, Anna de Armas, who uploaded images of her new friend, Salsa. Uh, and the actress Isla Fisher, who showed off her new dog. Oh, he's big, isn't he, that one? Uh, called, I think she's called Macy. I think she's called Macy. But as restrictions ease and we start going back to work eventually, if you've been working from home, will dogs and cats find themselves alone, depressed or even dumped back at a rescue centre? And is it right to get a pet during lockdown? Yeah, and we, we didn't mention the biggest celebrity, Ranveer Singh, of course. Who, uh, I've talked about Schmittles quite a lot on this programme. I think everyone knows about yeah. him and my feelings about this. Uh, and joining us now is Very former is Love well. Islander, Jordan Hames. Beautiful. Uh, who says lockdown is the best time to get a dog. Oh! Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, alongside singer Talia Storm, who thinks it's selfish to buy a pet during lockdown. Oh, you kill Joy. What's wrong with it? Hang on a minute now. That's not fair. It's what's selfish about it. It's a loving act during a time of, you know, when we're not able to see the ones we love. Look, as far as I'm concerned, I am sure that Jordan is now a fabulous doggy dad. However, I am thinking of those 47,000 dogs who were abandoned last year alone. Now, this was before a global pandemic. This was before the 320% surge in dog sales. So my heart aches for what happens when everybody goes back to work. What happens to the dog when we're... we're when, Perhaps Jordan's got his influencer trips or his TV shows and he's working hard. Who's going to be staying home with the dog? And I just hope that these, these purchases aren't impulse buys, they aren't erratic, and we're, we're thinking of the dog over ourselves. Jordan, have you yeah. thought about that? I mean, at the moment, everyone's maybe slightly you know, less busier. Have you thought about yeah. the provisions you will make when, when things sort of hopefully and will, of course, get, get busier for you? Yeah, definitely. I think, firstly, it's a huge responsibility to get a dog and... You know, it was something that I wanted to do my whole life. I remember when I was a kid and I asked for a dog when I was about six and my mum got me a cat. So it's something that I've always wanted to do. But <laughs> What's <laughs> but your mum wanted... about then? Mind you, cats are easier, aren't they? Is that why she did yeah, it? She just I thought, we can have a cat. Because they're a bit more independent. Um, but I just wanted to wait for the right time, really. So I'm quite in a unique, lucky position where I live with four of the other boys from Love Island and we're all dog lovers. So, oh, she's a bit rest restless oh. today. And so... So, um, you know, I ran that by them before I did get Cali because, you know, there's times where I am going to have to be out for a day. So that means that someone's always going to be in the house to, to watch her when I'm not there. But the reason why I think that lockdown's a great time to get a dog is because when you do first get a dog, um, they, do separ they do suffer from separation anxiety from the mother. So they do take that extra bit of, like, time and, and care in the first month to look after them. Um, while they obviously adapt to, to the new lifestyle. But I think dogs, dogs are super, super adaptable. So in the first week, she did cry throughout the night. Um, so I was waking up early, feeding her, like making sure I was there. And then now I tend, like everyone will go out and I'll leave her for an hour on her own so that when things do go back to normal and I do have to go to shoes, she's a bit, she's, she's a lot more accompanied to being on her own for an hour or two hours of the day. Yeah. But she'll fit into my lifestyle good because I'm doing a shoot on Tuesday and one of the... Um, and the client has asked me to bring her on the shoot with me, so... Ah, I think she... she's going to be a little proper celebrity <laughs> dog. It's interesting, model, but it's, yeah. in, it's interesting what you were saying, Talia, because uh, Katie on emails got in touch. She, said, she agrees with you. She says, yes, it is selfish. Uh, she volunteers at a dog rescue, and she says that there's been a massive increase of owner surrender dogs as they can't cope anymore in the last... Yeah. Just in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and she yeah. obviously says dogs are for life, not just for lockdown. But in a way, you know, we've got a dog, as I say, we got one because we thought about it for a long 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 time yeah. and I just thought actually my son's gonna didn't go to school for months and so it's look, a perfect look, time for everyone to get used to the dog's routine um, and not leave it alone for look, hours I, and hours I, on end I, I think the thing is my little brother is um, 13 and he has been asking my mum to buy him a dog every single day since lockdown started however my mum is fully aware that my parents both work full-time my brother goes to school from 8 till 6 p.m and I am working full-time so we might be able to give that dog all the love and affection right now but what happens in September when we all get our lives back who's going to be giving that dog that love 
love Anne. The, the, like you just mentioned, the Dog Trust have a very famous campaign saying a dog is not just for Christmas, it's for life. Yeah. And that is because at Christmas time, these sales snowball. And by the time January comes February and you've had that graceful honeymoon period with the dog, your, 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 your attachment goes slightly and people are, people are put, selfishly, putting them, selfishly putting themselves first. And this poor dog has left home. You know, are, uh, Jordan, Jordan, are you going to be turning down jobs when you're, you're asked to go overseas? You know, I, I hear there's three boys there. I'm getting like vibes from yeah. the movie, three men and a yeah. baby. You know, are you guys, <laughs> are yeah, you guys going like, to be turning down jobs for like, this dog? Like, like I said, I'm at, I'm at home quite a lot. Um, the boys are too. And I've also got a really good support network in Manchester where my family are. And my brother has actually got her sister as a puppy as well. So she's got, she's got her, fam her own family there too. Um, but what I do think is that, you know, people do have nine to five jobs and have dogs. I think that there's, as well as it being the right um, personal circumstances. Let's so see for... Callie, just lift Callie up a bit. And we're talking to you, but really we're all interested in the dog, let's be honest. Like, yeah. so we want a full on, we want just, a... yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, so you were just saying, so you're, you, you think that you've got your life sorted. Oh, look at that face, look at those ears. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and Callie's. <Yeah>. And... <laughs> and Callie's. The thing is, it's, it is also the thing, isn't it, that you've got to turn, I, I've decided that we're not gonna be going abroad and I've decided that before lockdown, before anything else, because one of the big things is if you like going on, you know, foreign holidays and things, you've got to start changing your plans a bit. Otherwise you do end up, yeah. Talia, as you were saying, not maybe thinking that you can't handle it day to day, but leaving them on their own a lot in kennels. And I think that it's... separation is not necessarily good for dogs yeah. either. I think it's just the long term plan, you know, is this going to be, is this going to last for the uh, uh, the future and the foreseeable future? Yeah. And I'm sure that Jordan has got the dog very honourably, honourably and, you know, like, loves it very much but I'm just thinking of those 47,000 dogs who are abandoned every year and the RSPC has actually come out and said and encouraged people to foster dogs rather yes. than just buying them a because um, the, w w this abandon rate is just going up and I don't even want to think about where we're going to be next year with the abandon rate yes. because we're already at 47,000 well, before uh, the pandemic. Uh, uh, Talia, I'm, 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 gl I'm glad you mentioned that I think fostering dogs is definitely a way forward I mean not all dogs are available for fostering because it might not suit them going to temporary homes but you can do what I did, and I've been sort of toying for over a year now with her to get a dog. But a good friend of mine, Pip, Pip Thompson, who works here at Good Morning Britain, she has three dogs. Two were rescued from South Korea, <laughs> and there's me and, and Robin. Totally being upstaged uh, by Robin. Exactly. Well, we're just copying each other. Uh, and now Robin, uh, he's basically, it uh, feels like he's my dog, but basically when, when Pips goes away on holiday or she uh, just feels like handing him over to me, I have him for a few weeks. And that's worked out really well. I've had him two, I think twice over lockdown. So... You know, if anybody's thinking about getting a dog, maybe speak to a friend who's got a dog and say, look, could you just have, have the dog for a it, week we or two? It? See um, how you feel about having the dog. And it'll probably give give the owner a bit of relief as well. Um, I think that's a, a good way forward. Thank you, both you. And Callie, we wish you luck with those uh, crazy boys in your home. <laughs> poor, poor dog. I worry for that dog.